At this time, please rise for the entrance of the official party. Thank you. Please take your seats. This morning, we are honored to have present the Honorable Jonathan F. Mitchell, Mayor of the City of New Bedford. To my left, we have family members of Chaplain Duvall himself, Miss Estella Pyers. Mr. William Pyers, Miss Eileen Fernandez, and Darlene Azadina. We also have Major General Gary Keefe, Adjutant General of the Massachusetts National Guard. We have the Superintendent of the New Bedford School Department, Pia Durkin. We have Brigadier General Len Kondrachuk, Commander of the Yankee Division's Veterans Association. We have Brigadier General Frank Labolita. The State Command Chaplain Bazar, Lawrence Bazar. The Reverend John J. Oliveira, Pastor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church and representative of the Bishop of the Diocese of Fall River. We also have from the New Bedford City Council, Councilor Naomi Carney. <laughs> Mr. Larry Finity of the prestigious New Bedford School Committee. We have your principal, Principal Darcy Ongst. We're happy to have Mr. Andrew O'Leary, Business Manager of the New Bedford Public Schools. We also have with us Mr. Arthur Marder from the New Bedford Public Schools. And we have one of your favorites, the Vice Principal, member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, Mr. Valde Silva. I'd like to welcome any state and local officials, our honored guests, family members, friends, members of the New Bedford High School, JROTC, commanders, staff, and soldiers of the Massachusetts National Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors by the New Bedford High School ROTC Color Guard, followed by the playing of the national anthem. It is customary for service members in uniform to render the hand salute during the playing of the national anthem and for those not in uniform to place their right hand over their heart. After this, State Command Chaplain Bazar will then give the invocation. Star, attention, Harry, colors. Forward, arch. March time. March. Guard. Hold. Center. Base. Present. Arms. Sir, permission to post the colors. Post the colors. Thank you.
these are. Hurry, rest. Please join me freely in prayer or personal thought, if you so choose. Our eternal guardian and ever-loving protector, we have come together to rededicate this school of learning by honoring the true courageous and heroic actions of one of your faithful servants, Chaplain First Lieutenant John B. DeValls of the famous 26th Yankee Division in celebration of the division's 100th anniversary. Since 1920, this new Bedford Elementary School has borne his sacred name as a symbol of honor and pride. Chaplain DeVos risked his own life on the World War I battlefield so that others may live and return home to their loved ones. His actions 100 years ago exemplify the very best of our National Guard, our citizen soldiers, the Chaplain Corps. Chaplain DeVos lived the call, forever true to his faith, a pro deo et patria for God and country. May this school forever proudly shine for all to see as it, as it bears its proud rededicated name, the John B. DeVals Elementary School. Today we remember your servant, Father DeVals, who cared for his troops and ask that you instill within us the spirit and inspiration to give our very best to our nation, our commonwealth, through gain knowledge in life in peace. Holy One, may future generations of chaplains, service members, and great citizens, young and old, work together in peace and harmony as one American people. May our Commonwealth of Massachusetts, along with all citizens of our great nation, be forever blessed with your divine light, hope, spirit, and strength. Amen. You may be seated. It's a great honor for me as the state chaplain for the Massachusetts National Guard to represent the United States Chaplain Corps and our Massachusetts National Guard Chaplain Corps. It's also very humbling knowing what this fellow chaplain did in life. Our roles as chaplains, religious clergy representing different faith groups, are here to serve our soldiers and airmen and other service members throughout the armed forces. Allow our troops to practice their faith, both home and while deployed. We also serve as religious affairs experts, advising our commanders on issues of moral and morale of the troops. We are there as pastoral counselors. We are called Ministry of Presence, for we bring hope and light to soldiers, and airmen, and other service members in need of help. Unlike those who, who, else, who serve, Chaplains are also non-combatants, which means we don't carry weapons. I guess our Bibles are our sacred shield. And as a guardsman, I'm proud to have both a civilian congregation and serve the great women and men of the Massachusetts National Guard. I can only hope to live one-tenth of the spirit, courage, and faith that Chaplain Duvall's exhibited. His memory is an inspiration to all chaplains. You, the students, and staff of this school are so fortunate and blessed to go to school here carrying his name. I charge all of you to carry on his name with pride. I, as an Army chaplain, salute you. Thank you. Thank you, Chaplain Bazar. It is now my honor to introduce the Mayor of the City of New Bedford, Mayor Jonathan F. Mitchell. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Boys and girls of all ages, but especially the elementary school students of the Duval School. I will uh, focus my remarks in your direction because we're really here um, about you today. Um, I want to begin my remarks by thanking a number of folks and welcoming certain other ones. Uh, I first of all, I want to, uh, to welcome 
the State Adjutant General, Major General Keefe, for being here today. I don't know if it's been explained to you guys, but the Adjutant General is the commander of the State National Guard, both Army and the Air side together. And we have a terrific leader in our Adjutant General, uh, our Adjutant General, Major General Keefe. So I just really want to thank you, sir, for, for your support of this effort. Uh, I want to thank uh, all who have attended, the, the descendants of uh, Father Duvall's, for sure, who have, I'm sure, plenty of stories to share with you, uh, including one who used to teach right here at, uh, at the school. Uh, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank the superintendent and uh, Principal Angst for uh, for making this day uh, possible as well. And I want to thank uh, those who are representing the Yankee Division Veterans Association for keeping the flame. Um, I also want to thank in particular uh, my friend uh, Major Tom Clark for, uh, for making this thing happen. Uh, Tom Clark used to be on the school committee here in New Bedford. Uh, he's an Iraq War veteran and he's a New Bedford guy and he, uh, this was his uh, idea and I want, really want to thank him personally and would ask to ask you to join me in a round of applause for uh, his effort. Thank you. thank you, Major Clark. Um, so I think, I, I'm not going to, uh, there's a speaking program, I, I want to just uh, I'm going to offer up a few words that I hope will spark some uh, contemplation on the part of the students here. So, you know, to get a sense of what Father Duvall's did, uh, you have to sort of take yourself back in time, of course, 100 years ago. So 100 years ago, just a little over 100 years ago, the United States declared war on Germany. And this was after a long time of really trying to stay out of things in Europe. It was a war among countries that were ruled by kings, and we, that, wasn't, that wasn't our thing in America, of course, and you're learning about that uh, in school. But the, the war really pushed us to the point where we had uh, no choice. Uh, American vessels were being sunk by submarines. Uh, there was a policy called un unrestricted submarine warfare, with the, uh, which the Germans reinitiated in 1917, and lots of American civilians were losing their lives out on the high seas. It got really, really bad. And so the point came where President Wilson said, enough's enough, we've, we've, got to, we've got to step in. And so that's what happened in 1917. And so, what hap so it happened everywhere across America where people were just had to step up and do something on behalf of their country. And there was little hesitation, uh, whether you were on a farm somewhere uh, in the Midwest or out in the desert in Arizona, or if you lived in the bayous of uh, Louisiana, or if you lived in New Bedford, you knew you had to step up for America. And you can picture what America, what New Bedford was like back then, because as it turns out, our neighborhood here, this part of the South End, as well as many other parts of the city, didn't look all that different, right? So if you look around, this school was here. It was called the Catherine Street School. The park, Ashley Park, was there. Uh, Mount Carmel Church was there. There used to be the Goodyear factory over there. There were more mills, and, and this was a city that was really growing. It was bigger in terms of population than it is now. It was more dense. People, just about everybody walked to work in a mill, and just about everyone, this is really the key point, virtually everybody, the vast majority of people who lived in New Bedford had, had families, they came from families that had just immigrated, and had a lot of them, most of them had just immigrated from where the war was taking place. So think about that. And some of them were, you know, had to go fight against countries they, their family has, had come from, but or family that had some connection to those countries. Uh, in, my, in my own family's case, and I'll just use this as an example, so just indulge me for a second. My grandmother grew up uh, in a house where the Elm Street garage downtown is now located and had a big family. Her parents came over from Bavaria, which is part of Germany, and, uh, and she had five older brothers that went over to the war. Now think about that, and this is not atypical. They had five brothers who went over to fight against the, you know, the country that their parents had just come from and whose language they spoke at the dinner table. Right, so th this was this was a deeply, deeply, deeply patriotic city, and that's that. That is a story that countless families in our city can can tell, and it's also uh, really highlights what Father Duvall's was part of. Father Duvall's was an immigrant to this country as well, and he stepped up at a time, knowing that as a as a priest, as a man of the cloth, as they say, 
that he wasn't going to engage in combat that would be against his, his calling as a priest, but there were ways that he could contribute and ways that really required him to show extraordinary courage. And so when we talk about what he did, I mean, think about, picture what it was like when America got fully involved in the war in 1918, so 99 years ago. There were kids not too much older than what you are now, all heading over there, and they had, they, it was their job to, to fight the enemy on the other side of an area that was swept with machine gun fire and hit with artillery and was very, very dangerous, and they'd look out across no man's land, and not only was it dangerous, but they could see where bodies laid that had been uh, shot down or blown up in one way or the other, not just a couple of months earlier, but two years before and so forth, and it was such an, an awful place that people couldn't go out, soldiers couldn't go out and bring those bodies back. That's the kind of environment that Father Duvall did his work in, to go out, uh, as chaplains have historically done, gone out and comforted people, comforted soldiers, even sometimes soldiers on the other side, under the most difficult of circumstances, and required of him extreme courage, and he, his, uh, and he paid a very dear physical price for, for doing that. He was wounded, as, as they tell us, by a German gas attack that left him debilitated and ultimately led to a, a, a death at a very young age. This is this is what he did for our country. And so it was appropriate then, 100 years ago, for the city, almost 100 years ago, for our city to, to name the school in his honor. We don't name schools, we haven't before, and we won't in the future name schools after just anybody. We name schools, we honor people who are worthy of our emula emulation. In other words, we, we name schools after people we think are heroic because everybody needs a hero. Everybody needs somebody to look up to. Everybody needs somebody to emulate because we all want to be better people. We have to, all of you, I know, understand that we need, uh, all of us need to find ways to, to make ourselves better people, kinder people, more courageous, more virtuous people as we go on. And as much as you're learning in school about, about math and science and social studies is another big part of your experience in school that is so important. That's the kind of people you're developing into. And so what, what all these folks up here have done today is really to show you this really great example. It's cool to watch a Black Hawk land and take off. We hope you have some fun and learn something from that. But the bigger point here, boys and girls, is what is, is the lesson that the person who your school is named after has, uh, has taught us, which is to care for country, to care for your fellow man, to, to extend yourself a little bit more in the cause of worthy purposes. That's what we're really, that's what it's really about. So if there's anything for you to take away today, boys and girls, it's that. I hope, I'm so glad we had a nice day today so you could come out here and experience a, a very, very rich uh, ceremony like this and to see some people here who uh, really exemplify the things that Father Duvall believed in. Thank you very much for listening, boys and girls. You've been great. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. It is now my privilege to introduce the Adjutant General of the Massachusetts National Guard, Major General Gary W. Keefe. Good morning, boys and girls. Come on, I know, I know you can be louder than that. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, all right. So I'm going to say a few words, and then as the Mayor said, we've got some other neat stuff for you guys to take a look at. But as the mayor also mentioned, we're here to talk about a hero, a real hero. So good morning. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Mayor. Good morning. Superintendent Durkin, Principal Longst, Father, Father Alavero, Brigadier General Abelita, Brigadier General Kondrachuk, Chaplain Colonel Larry Baser, always a pleasure. Colonel Oberton, Mr. Larry Finnerty, and Counselor Naomi Connery Carney. Especially all you students here at the Duval School, welcome and thank you for inviting me and uh, not just let me talk to you today, but get me out of my office, so I appreciate that. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge and welcome some very, very special guests here today. They're all relatives, as was mentioned, of Father John B. Duval. Mrs. Estelle Paris, whose father was uh, Father Duval's cousin. Her husband, William. Her sister, Eileen Fernandez and her daughter, Darlene Azadina. Thank you all for being here today as we honor your late cousin. I also want to acknowledge uh, one of our own, and he is your, uh, your vice principal. You guys 
know him as Mr. Silva. I know him as Sergeant Silva. So when he's not, where, where did he disappear to? There he comes. So when he's not, when he's, when he's not walking around with that sharp tie, he is wearing a uniform like this. And he is, uh, he works for what's called an intelligence wing. And this is an intelligence wing, 24 hours a day, they are looking through satellites and looking at bad guys around the world. So when you see him, he is known as, to me, he is Technical Sergeant Silva. And he is a great American and a great airman. So it's always a pleasure seeing him. So as the mayor said, the 26th Yankee Division, that was a, a large army organization that came from New England, mostly out of Massachusetts, but covered all New England. A hundred years ago, as the mayor said, World War I, which was called the Great War. And the Great War, what everyone thought at the time, would be the war to end all wars. So there'd be no future wars. But that didn't happen. So part of the 26th Yankee Division, they had many heroes. But no one was more loved, respected, and thought of than Father John Baptiste Duval, who grew up, as the mayor mentioned, right here in the city of New Bedford. He served the good people of New Bedford as a loving priest. And in the military, we have a code. It's summed up with the saying, we leave no man behind. It stands for the principles that we all stand together and fight together. We face the challenges as one team, one unit, and no matter what happens, who falls, who's wounded, we all come home together. And Father Duvall lived to that code. World War I, as was mentioned, was a terrible, terrible war. It went on for a long time, but as the mayor mentioned, the battlefield was just nothing but death and destruction. So much so that the soldiers lived underground. They lived in trenches, dirt trails dug underground. They lived in caves. Terrible weapons came out in World War I. Father Duvall suffered from a uh, gas attack. So you, guys, when you do gym class and you're running, you're playing sports, football, any football players out there? You know, it's like when you run with your pads on a hot, humid day and you can't breathe. People that suffer from gas attacks during this war, they had that 100 times worse. Just walking, they could not breathe. The United States soldiers who had to endure these hardships were brave. However, they, were all, they all recognized that Father Duvall was one of the bravest among them. His door was always open to his soldiers. When he received supplies from home, from his family, from his congregation, it usually was clothing, books, I'm sure a lot of good baked stuff. Uh, let's be honest, I'm sure there's plenty of Portuguese bakeries around that sent him plenty of good stuff. Uh, whenever he received it, he always gave it to his men first. Even when he wasn't in his room, when he was out on the battlefield administering the faith, his door was always wide open, and his soldiers were always allowed to come in and just take whatever they wanted to eat. When he asked about why he allowed that, he goes, I didn't mind at all. There's always going to be more coming. During the four days of what became known as the Battle of Aframon, Father Duvall stayed right in the midst of the fight. He helped carry wounded and worked until his wrist and hands gave out from carrying stretchers. So he worked nonstop taking wounded and dying men off the battlefield, carrying them in stretchers, to the point where his hands were gnarled like this and didn't work anymore. But that didn't stop him. Once his hands and wrists gave out, he adopted a soldier's trick. He took telephone wire and wrapped them around the stretchers and then wrapped them around loops and had them on his, on his, uh, on his wrist. And he still continued to carry them while his hands were bleeding and the skin was peeling away from his hands. He searched in the wake of fighting multiple waves for those who had been dropped or wounded and comforted the last moments of those that would die of their wounds on the battlefield. So after he got everyone back that he could, he went back out to administer last rites and last prayers for those men that weren't going to survive. Major General Clarence Edwards, commander of the 26th Infantry Division, said this about Father Duvall. He lived on the front lines, in the trenches with the fighting men. He even did this when it was not in his own unit. He was a friend to all soldiers. I found him there myself as I toured the front lines. I found Father Duvall, even though the 
4th Infantry, his unit, was in the rear. He would sneak back to the front lines, back into battle. I thought he was wearing himself out, and I ordered him to rest. However, he continued to care for the soldiers who were facing the most danger. So even after a two-star general tells the father, a lieutenant, hey, you're done, you need to knock it off, he still went back out there, taking care of the wounded and the dying. He represented the spirit of the Yankee division. I'm honored to represent the men and women of the Massachusetts National Guard here today as we honor a great man, a great priest, a great American, and a great and true hero. You have a great school here, and a great neighborhood, and a great city. I ask all of you, as students, here today to remember the man for which this school is named, to remember his deeds, but also to live up to the example that he has set for all of us to follow. As was mentioned, we all need heroes, and you're gonna be faced with decisions in life. You're going to have stuff that's going to trap you and hurt you. And if you make that wrong decision, always ask yourself, whether your hero is, what would your hero do? If you're not sure who your hero is, learn more about Father Duvall. I recently learned that the Massachusetts National Guard Museum had a piece of history related to Father Duvall. It's a bronze tablet that has been created in his likeness. And the tablet was commissioned, which means it was paid for and built by the soldiers who befriended Father Duvall during the most challenging times of their lives while they were fighting the enemy in battle. These soldiers did not want his example of courage to be forgotten. They could have memorialized hundreds of other men, but they chose Father John B. Duvall. They honored the man who was there for them when they needed help the most. They honored the man for whom this great school is named. I wanted this great piece of art in history to be placed where it could have the greatest impact and inspire the most people where it would be honored and cared for. And there was no other place when we talked about it than the John B. Duvall School. I can think of no better place than the John B. Duvall Elementary School here in the city of New Bedford, a city that for hundreds of years has provided fighting men and women for our nation's wars, specifically in the Yankee Division. In the Yankee Division, an unbelievable amount of soldiers came from New Bedford and the Fall River area. If Father Duvall's was here today, he would still recognize this place, this town, this area, this street, as the mayor mentioned. He walked the streets of the city in this very neighborhood. He must have walked, walked past this very school as it was built in 1911 and named for him in 1920. I know he would be very proud that this school bears his names, and he would be proud of each and every student who attends this great school. And he would be proud of the young men and women and great Americans you are, are now and you will become as you become adults. Again, thank you for welcoming me here today. May God bless all the parents, teachers, especially your teachers, and students, each of you, of the John B. Duvall School. Remember, do the right thing. There's a lot out there that's going to trip you up and tempt you to make the wrong choice. Don't do it. Ask yourself what your hero would do. May God bless the great city of New Bedford. May God bless the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And now and forever, may God bless our great United States of America. Thank you. time, I'd like to ask Mayor Mitchell, General Keefe, Councilor Naomi Carney, and Mr. Finity to come forward. And uh, Mr. Silva, can we get the three students that are going to help us uh, with this unveiling? Okay, so, so if you can be on one side here. Okay. Uh, Naomi, can you join the general, sir? Can you join uh, the mayor on that side? We're going to get we're going to get three students to help us do okay. the trip. Okay. All right, come on forward, kids. Come on forward, kids. Don't be shy. What's your name, hon? Angela. Angela? Mm -hmm. Olivia. Olivia. Ronnie. Ronnie. Come on front. Join the mayor, Ronnie. Join the general ladies. Come on forward. Hey, guys. At this time, uh, Mayor Mitchell and General Keefe are going to unveil the bust of Chaplain Duvall as a gift from the Mass National Guard to the 
city of New Bedford. How about we do a, a countdown three. from uh, three, all right? There you go. Three, two, one. You got a smile for the cameras, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good job. Great job. Well done. Thank you, General Keith and Mayor Mitchell. It is now my privilege to introduce the superintendent of the New Bedford Public Schools, Ms. Pia Durkin. Well, I am so proud of Duval School today, and I very much want to thank Major General Keith and Major Tom Clark for putting this together and having a wonderful opportunity to learn about our past. Now, I know you've been very patient and have listened to who Chaplain Duval was. But I want to talk about him in a different way. I want to talk about him if he was a friend of yours. First of all, he was born to a poor family in the Azores. How many of you have family that came come from the Azores? He also came to New Bedford as a very little boy. And he couldn't speak English. But slowly, day by day, he learned how to speak English and how to communicate with friends and family. He not only spoke English, but he spoke other languages. And he could do that because he could talk to so many different people. And it, that helped him his entire life. So I always talk about my kids who know two languages or three languages, that they are brilliant, because I only know one language. How many of you know two or three languages here? Yes. That is the proud group of Duval scholars. So he cared a lot about people, and helping talking to them was very important. You heard a lot today about what he did during the war, that he didn't carry a weapon, that he used his words, and he used his thoughts to comfort people. Very similar to what we are learning in New Bedford Public Schools, that we talk out our issues, that we make the right decisions, that we manage our emotions, and we help others to do the same. Because we are here at Duval School to be able to do the very best learning we can. And with Ms. Angst and Mr. Silver and with all the wonderful teachers here, I know we are doing that. We are planning for learning, not just planning about making sure we learn reading and math, but planning how much we can learn. We are planning to have good relationships with each other and with adults. And we are going to make this the very, very, very best school in all of New Bedford. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Durkin. It is now my privilege to introduce to you the current Deputy Commander of the 26th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. They carry the history of Chaplain Duvall's unit, the 26th Yankee Division. Sir. All right, good afternoon. The, uh, first of all, a great job out there in the crowd as a father to a few elementary school kids. Uh, I know that it's not the most fun just sitting in the, uh, in the audience, but, uh, but, but great job out there and, and keep listening. So now it's, it's my true pleasure to be here today uh, to represent the 26th Yankee Brigade. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Jason Oberton, and as said, I'm the Deputy Commander of the Brigade. Thank you, General Keefe. Mayor Mitchell, Superintendent of Schools Durkin, Principal Angst, fellow service members, family of Chaplain Duvall, and students of the John B. Duvall Elementary School. It is now my privilege to tell you a little bit about the 26th Yankee Division, uh, the unit, and the organization that Chaplain Duvall came from. The 26th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade traces its lineage to the 26th Infantry Division, activated on August 22nd, 1917. 100 years ago. It was built out of the states from the National Guard, uh, out of the New England states for the National Guard. The division commander, General Edwards, chose the nickname the Yankee Division in recognition of the unit.
its New England roots and adopted the YD as its insignia that they wear on their shoulder. The division deployed to Europe during World War I and saw extensive combat in six major campaigns. The 26th was the first full U.S. division to deploy to France in the fall of 1917, and the 26th fought in, and spent more time on the front line than any other division except one. The 26th was one of the best divisions in the American Expeditionary Force. They then again mobilized for World War II, commanded by General Paul, and landed in France in, uh, in September 1944. With 199 days in combat, the division's battle lineage includes four major com campaigns. And when returning from World War II, they continued to be the centerpiece of the Massachusetts National Guard. The 26th Minor Enhancer Brigade which traces its lineage to the division, stood up September 1st in 2008. In, a, in February 2011, they deployed to Afghanistan, and as part of their year-long mobilization, the 26th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade completed many activities in Afghanistan, such as training and mentorship of the Afghan National Forces and numerous patrols in and around Kabul to provide a sense of safety to the common Afghan person. Upon redeploying in February 2012, the 26th Meteor Enhanced Brigade assumed responsibility of the Region 1 Homeland Response Force. And the unit is charged with providing response within 12 hours of alert to any all-hazard, large-scale disaster in all of New England. In closing, remember why we're here today. Remember who your school is named after. And remember not to forget and just as important, teach your friends and family that are not here what this country has because of brave men, men and women who have served our nation, like Chaplain Duvall. In the words of the President Truman, our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. Thank you again for having me here today. Your presence here today to honor a prominent Yankee Division veteran and hero is humbling. God bless you and your families. God bless our military. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Colonel Wolberton. At this time, if we could have Mayor Mitchell come forward. And uh, Mr. Silva, can we get those students who are going to participate for the award ceremony? Students are going to join you. You guys get to be with the mayor. Come right over to the mayor's side, right where the mayor is. Yeah, it is fine. Yeah, you get on the other side. I'm at the town. And then, uh, General Keefe, please come forward. Yeah. Oh, you got it. All right, first I'm going to describe the Distinguished Service Cross, and then I'm going to ask you all to stand. But you can remain seated right now. The Distinguished Service Cross is the second highest military award that can be given to a member of the United States Army for extreme gallantry and risk of life in actual combat with an armed enemy force. Actions that merit the Distinguished Service Cross must be of such a high degree that they are above those required for all other U.S. combat decorations. It is second only to the Medal of Honor. The extraordinary heroism and the acts of heroism must have been so noble and have involved a risk of life so extraordinary as to set the individual apart from his comrades. All right, everybody, please stand. Attention to orders. The Distinguished Service Cross is presented to Chaplain First Lieutenant John B. Duvalls for extraordinary heroism in action near Appermont, the total sector of France between April 10th through 13th, 1918. Chaplain Duvalls repeatedly exposed himself to heavy enemy artillery and machine gun fire in order to assist in the removal of wounded from exposed points in the line. Chaplain Duvall's worked for long periods of time with stretcher berries and carrying wounded men to safety. Chaplain Duvall's also had rendered heroic service on March 11, 1918 by remaining with a group of wounded during heavy enemy bombardment. General Keefe will now present the Distinguished Service Cross to Mayor Mitchell and the students.
time. We got two more. You're almost done. The World War I Victory Medal was established by an act of Congress in 1919 and promulgated by the War Department under General Order Number 48. It recognizes the service of an individual during World War I. Attention to orders. The World War I Victory Medal is presented to Chaplain First Lieutenant John B. Duvalls for service with the United States Army Allied Expeditionary Forces in France, 26th Infantry Division, from October 1917 through April 1919. General Keefe will now present the World War I Victory Medal to the students of the Duvall Elementary School and the mayor of the city of New Bedford. Welcome. Bill. The French Croix de Guerre, also known as the Cross of War, is a military decoration of the nation of France. It was first created in 1915 and consists of a square cross medal on two crossed swords hanging from a ribbon with various degree pins. The decoration was awarded during World War I and again in World War II. The Croix de Guerre was awarded to those soldiers who distinguished themselves by acts of heroism involving combat with an enemy of the United States. The medal was awarded to those who had been mentioned in orders and dispatches from their commanders, commanders meaning that a heroic deed or deeds were performed meriting a citation and recognize the acts of valor. Attention to orders. The French Croix de Guerre is presented to Chaplain First Lieutenant John B. Duvalls for extraordinary heroism and exceptional devotion to duty. Under uninterrupted enemy fire, he did not cease to care for the wounded and to encourage to renewed efforts the men who had been worn out by hard fighting. General Keefe will now award the Croix de Guerre to the students of the John B. Duvalls Elementary School and the mayor of the city of New Bedford. Thank you, General Keefe. Students, you can be seated. Mayor Mitchell, I turn the podium over to you, sir. Boys and girls, you've been wonderful today, and there's one word of business left after all these very inspiring words today. And so, with uh, my authority, um, as delegated by the New Bedford School Committee, I hereby declare this school, the John B. Duvall School, rededicated. You can clap now, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, General. Thank you, Major Clark. Well done, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call, for, fa call forward Father Oliveira for our benediction. Please stand and remain standing after the prayer for the playing of the Army song. Father Oliveira, please do us this honor. The, the boys and girls who belong to Mount Carmel said, who's that Father John Oliveira? It looks like Father Jack is here. I am. It's me. And boys and girls, uh, Bishop de Cunha, who's the Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Fall River, that uh, New Bedford is part of was invited to be here today but he couldn't come because of other schedules things that he had to do today but he did want me to say to everyone uh, first of all to all those who organized today's tribute to Father Duvall's thank you very much for the recognition for acknowledging who Father was what he did for his country uh, and for his church uh, he's a very, very special member of the priests of the Diocese of Fall River. Father Duvall's, when he was first ordained in 1906, he worked at Mount Carmel Church, and he lived in the rectory where I live now, that house right next door to the church. Father Duvall lived there when he was stationed at Mount Carmel. And so he knew this neighborhood. And Father Duvall was a kid just like you. And he grew up to be a man who made all these contributions 
for his country that we can look up to. And so don't think you have to be born extraordinary. No, we're all born ordinary and we become extraordinary day by day with all the good choices that we can make. So I'm proud to live in this neighborhood with Father Duvall's school right here. I'm proud of all the boys and girls since 1911 who belong to Mount Carmel Church and went to this school and to all the other boys and girls of our neighborhood who go to Duvall's school and for the faculty and for the leadership of the school. So boys and girls, let's just take a second and wrap up our celebration today. Just close your eyes maybe for a minute, kind of be quiet inside. And we'll bow our heads and pray, asking God for peace in our world, in our cities, and in our families, and our school. God, our loving Father, you are merciful to us. Pour out your spirit of peace into the hearts of all people and help us wherever we may be, now and in the future, to always be peacemakers who work for harmony and love. Amen. concludes our ceremony. Teachers, please take control of your students and have a great day. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell, General Keith, and Superintendent Durkin.